Today I've got a very special guest with me. His name is Dwayne Kaiser. He's a client of ours and we recently did a launch. And I think what makes this launch special is that Dwayne is a painter. Uh, he has an Instagram following and he basically just uploads his own paintings. And what we did is we launched an online course teaching other people how to do what he's doing, how to create a painting per day. So without any further ado, let's dive right into the interview and I hope you enjoy it. Hey, what's up guys? I'm here with Dwayne Kaiser. What's up Dwayne? How's it going? Hey, tell good. Good to see you. So Dwayne, he is a painter with a pretty uh, big following on Instagram and you started the painting a day movement, right? Yes. Tell, tell us yeah. a bit more about that. Tell us more about what that is and all of, all of that. Well, the short version of it is that I had been painting for a long time and showing in galleries and I showed in a bunch of New York galleries for a time and, you know, taking the traditional route of what most artists were doing in the 90s and so forth. And then the Internet came along. And during all of this, I had been doing these small paintings in the background, just of things that were going on in my life, things around me, vignettes from my life. And the galleries weren't particularly interested in those because they were small and they were kind of sketchy and so forth. They were interested in my larger, more expensive pieces. So I started selling those myself directly to people that were uh, my you know, family and friends. I'd have my own shows and my own studio and my own, you know, I made my own space for it. I'd have my own parties, my own openings. And people would come and they really responded to it. And I made them very cheap and inexpensive so people could afford them. So a lot of people were buying their first original painting and that following really developed quickly and it got larger and larger. My parties got bigger and bigger. I had bands and magicians would show up and it really got huge. And uh, then I eventually started putting things online. So I would give people these and I would make a, a, I started this blog called a painting a day and I would make a painting each day, no matter what. And first come, first serve, people could buy the painting uh, once they got it in the email. And so they would sell within minutes. And people were getting frustrated that they, you know, they had to be tethered to their computer. This is before phones and so forth, where iPhones were around strong, you know, everywhere. And so uh, I started putting them on eBay. eBay got in touch with me and said, hey, why don't you try to sell these on eBay? And at the time, eBay was like a garage sale. So I was a little bit skeptical about it associating with that, but I went ahead and did it. And this gave people time to like bid on the painting and think about it. And so I'd have these five day auctions and the, the price could go up or down depending on the painting, depending on who was bidding on it. And people were really excited about it. And so things started taking off then and then things really blew up and USA Today did a full page spread on the idea of it, that this was the first time an artist or one of the first times an artist was kind of selling directly to collectors rather than in a gallery. Um, so I cut out the middleman like like musicians and comedians were doing at the time. And it just kind of spread from there. And then other artists emulated the idea. Uh, and then here we are. That's awesome. Yeah. And you have a pretty big Instagram following by now as well, right? So you, yeah. you started basically you know, with these like parties and offline and the whole transition to eBay. Yeah. And then you also posted a lot of your paintings uh, on Instagram, right? And, and you have like 100, 140,000 people there. Yeah. And just maybe where can people check out some of your work, you know, before we dive into talking about some other stuff, like where can people check out your paintings and what you're doing? Well, they can go to DwayneKaiser.com. That's kind of where you can go. From there, you can go anywhere. Um, Instagram is a good start, too. Um, I've also got a lot of videos of animated paintings that I make that have gotten a huge following as well. You can also see those on Instagram or, again, on my website. Um, I've got a Twitter following, but that's I'm kind of playing around with Twitter right now. But mostly Instagram and DwayneKaiser.com. Awesome. Yeah. So... And recently, you also transitioned to selling courses and trainings. So yeah. initially, you, you were selling your paintings, your art. Um, and when we talked, we were discussing the idea of launching a course, which now we've done in the last three months. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about kind of your experience as an artist, 
you know, kind of working in a creative space, doing a launch like this, what your experience was and, and the lessons. So first and foremost, yeah, kind of maybe tell people about the course that you launched, like what, what was the course all about? What did you teach and how was it structured? Just so people can get a more tangible idea of the actual product that we launched. I, I've been a teacher for, you know, since the late, the early nineties, teaching in college and so forth. And then more recently, last several years in workshops. And I've been teaching in these workshops all around the country. And I've been teaching something called premier coup painting, which is basically, it means first strike or a one session painting. And I've been teaching these all around the country and, you know, COVID came along and so forth. So that shut down a few of those workshops that I was teaching. And I started looking into the idea of doing a video course of some way or doing something online, but I was never quite sold on the idea. Like I couldn't imagine how that would look or how I would do it because I have very hands-on teaching. Um, so I was, I was kind of skeptical of it, uh, but it was a possibility. I knew I could, there's some things I could try, but I was kind of afraid to, I think. And then um, I spoke with you and you kind of changed my mind on some things. Um, I was still skeptical, but I liked your idea and it made sense to me. It was a huge jump, very big jump for me because you kind of talked me into kind of thinking a little bit bigger and of uh, doing a lot of things that I'm not particularly comfortable with, which is videoing myself. So I had to you know, kind of dive into that kind of situation and learn how to edit properly and all of that. But it ended up being a really fascinating process. And so when we kind of dived into this, this course and designing it, you know, you have this very systematic way. So it was kind of nice to be able to look at a roadmap and know where I was at any given point, even though I had to kind of learn some things along the way, but the pacing was really well. And so when I started this and I, my launch, I was expecting, you know, maybe I'd get 30 or 40 people to sign up for the class and um, and that would be over the course of a week. I would maybe kind of, and <laughs> I remember I was sitting there looking at my computer screen, just kind of watching the signups on launch day. And uh, in, the <laughs> in the first one minute, 50 people signed up, maybe, wow. maybe two minutes. Yeah, I was, I was excited and a little horrified because I didn't know if I was suddenly going to get, you know, way more than I was going to be able to handle. And, um, you know, Oliver uh, talked me through it, kind of talked me down a little bit, calmed me down. He said, it's okay, let's just watch and see what happens. It slowed down a little bit, but still, I was getting a lot of people and it ended up at like 100. And I had to shut it down at that point because I felt like I wasn't going to be able to give the course that I wanted to give if there was many more people than that. Um, and so then the course came and... You know, there's lots of little unknowns about it. I know how to teach, I know how to speak, all of that, but organizing it and making it so that everybody was comfortable with the online aspect of it, that was kind of an unknown. But again, Oliver helped me through that and it's really turned out well. Like I think people are really excited about it. And I think in a lot of ways, surprisingly, I think it's, there, there are some ways it's actually better than a live workshop. There's a that's there's really a interesting. Yeah. In what sense? I mean, first and foremost, that's an awesome quality problem to have shutting yeah. down the launch early when so you, you got 50 signups in the first hour. And then how long did it take you to hit like 100 and basically close registration? Well, I got I got it was 48 in the first few minutes. I got right first few yeah. minutes, not even yeah. the first and then, hour. <laughs> and then after that, I got like within an hour, hour, it was about an hour and a half. I got on about a little over a hundred. Gotcha. So now basically registration is closed and we're talking about kind of relaunching it and, and how that works as well. Yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting. Yeah. And I think it's nice because you have a hundred people that you can work with more intimately. You can learn kind of what their needs are. Yeah. what they need help with and and so your course was kind of like the workshops that you did in person just translated online is that correct yeah it translates in a different way when i'm in a workshop 
and I've got 15 people or 20 people or something like that, I can kind of look over their shoulder and I can kind of work on their painting and so forth. And that's good. You know, that's, that's definitely a positive for, you know, teaching live and they can ask questions and it's a little bit, you know, the technology is not in the way and so forth. But there are a lot of times in teaching painting where you have to allow somebody to paint on their own by themselves before they can actually formulate good questions. And then when they, they email me or they'll be on my Facebook page, the, the private group that I made for everybody, and they can ask me direct, it becomes a kind of this, it becomes an almost one-on-one -on -one situation for everybody. You know, they feel like they have my, I, you know, they email me a certain problem that they're having, maybe in private, maybe on Facebook. And we have this kind of dialogue that goes on over the course of this project that I'm giving them where they have to make a painting each day for a month. You know, so over the course of this project, they have, they have me for a whole month and I get to watch them for a whole month. Whereas right. with a workshop, it's typically over a weekend or something, you know, so it comes gotcha. in and, yeah. it's, and it's very quick and it just kind of, I slam all the, slam them with all this information, but here they have a whole month to kind of digest it. And then I have live Zoom calls once a week. And so it's, it's, it's different. It's got some disadvantages, but mostly I've been very happy with the fact that it's just, it's just a different, it's just a different way of teaching and it's apples and oranges in a lot of ways. Yeah, it, it's a different, it's hard to compare like a, an in-person workshop with an online course, but yeah. yeah, oftentimes, you know, there's advantages, um, obviously you don't have to travel, stuff like that, which is yeah. kind of cool. Yeah, that's huge. That's a huge advantage too. Yeah, for me. yeah, especially during these times. Yeah. Um, so basically you, you had those 48, uh or so people in the first minute you sold out you know around in an hour or so yeah. and basically what was i mean what was your experience let's say someone else is like art in an artistic niche or they're not really you know they're in a hobby market or a very creative industry what would you what advice would you give a person like that let's say they're thinking of launching a course right what are right some of the lessons that you learned that you would pass on to, you know, someone like that? Well, one of the lessons that I learned and, and probably the reason why I even tried to do this in the first place, why I was open to the idea was a lesson that I learned really back when I started the uh, painting a day idea. And that is I was, I, I started, you know, artists often see business as this necessary evil. And that's a lot of times why they get involved with galleries anyways. They want the galleries to handle the ugly stuff, right? The, the salesmanship. And they want to just focus on the painting, which makes perfect sense. And I totally understand that. But I started to open myself up to the possibility that business can be just as creative as painting. You know, it's just another, it's another medium. And I felt like if I had you know, a comfort level with business, not in kind of a crass way that went against my vision as a painter. I have a wall between my paintings and my business. I keep those two things separate. What I do at my easel is not affected by how I market my work, but now I can design, you know, because I kind of let some of this in, I allowed, you know, started thinking about this as a creative pursuit, just like my painting is a creative pursuit. I can make my marketing and sell my work the way I want to sell it. I can build a business plan around my work rather than the other way around. And I felt like this course was kind of another way for me to tailor make uh, this business. This is another business for me, online teaching, um, to make it my way and to make it a way that fits my vision. And that's one of the things that I liked about your approach and what's really sold me on. Uh, was that you were not going to make me a hideous kind of car salesman and go out there and blast people with things that just weren't me or make me sound like somebody that wasn't me and scare away all of my fans and everybody and horrify them. Um, you basically gave me this structure that I could build, you know, a foundation that I could build anything that I wanted on top of it my way. And you said, well, you should do this and this and this. 
and you can kind of structure your email kind of like this and your timing should be like this and all those things made perfect sense but you're always you know make it sound like you don't make it sound like me or anybody else and that was that was very helpful and i think that that's what made me comfortable with it all the way through um, yeah that aspect that i could make it part of my my vision i like that and that's also one of the ways I view business in general, like as a, it's a set of skills that can be used very, very creatively because I'm, I actually come from a musical uh, or music background. My first business was actually in music production. I used to have a small store selling music to artists, like to oh. video editors and hobby vocalists and rappers. So initially I learned a lot of my marketing skills, just wanting to sell my own music online. That was back in 2012. Oh, interesting. Um, and when I got into business, I stopped kind of, I stopped selling music uh, a long time ago, but I then used or felt that same creative energy and inspiration that I felt when I was making music. I felt that as well, building my business, kind of designing your dream lifestyle and, and building cool things that you can be proud of and like, uh, creating all these awesome things it was always a very creative process for me almost like having a toolbox having all these different uh, building blocks that you can use and you can just build whatever you want with it so that's still something that also drives me these you know these days and so i can really relate to that yeah. creative part of business and i think it's interesting that you say you know sometimes artists and creative uh, people in creative industries they're too close maybe to the idea of learning about business because they think it's separate, right? Because they think it's like something completely different. So the trick is really to use that creative energy, like you're saying, right? That, that inspiration and just changing your mindset about business and viewing your life and your business and what you're building as a piece of art almost. And then right. you can have fun with it, right? Right, exactly. Yeah, I love that. Um, so basically, one thing that's also interesting with you is most of your audience is on Instagram. Is that correct? Yeah, well, I've got a huge mailing list too. Um, that's pretty extensive. And that's kind of my bread and butter in a lot of ways. It always has been. I learned early on to value the email even more than social media because social media, they're always changing it and manipulating it. And you don't have as much control over who's seeing your stuff. Whereas with email, it's a little more intimate. It's kind of a one-on-one -on -one relationship with a lot of different people. And I have complete control over it. And so far email is still king for me. Um, but awesome. yeah, but Instagram is, has been, the last few years has, has gained more and more dominance in my, um, my footprint or whatever. So it's basically the email list that you built and Instagram. And, and how did you build that email list back in the day? Was that, did you give something away for free or was it just connections of people you met? No, it or? was my, uh, it was these fabulous parties that I threw slash openings at my show. So I have, you know, I, I take my studio and I would put these little paintings on the wall and I would turn it into a gallery and I would have lots of good booze. I would play good jazz. I'd have good, decent food. And so I made it the opposite of what a typical stodgy, you know, gallery opening is. I made it actually fun. And so people showed up for that. And I made sure very early on that everybody who came in signed in and just added their email to it. So I just, from very early on, even before emails were really, you know, kind of a thing, um, it was back in the AOL days, um, I was collecting emails and I just, it was started out with family and friends and then that spread and then word of mouth. And I was very aggressive about just making sure everybody signed that book and that's it. And then it just spread from there and then word of mouth and then the press came and um, then things went viral. That's awesome. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Like that early on collecting emails, definitely yeah. something, something yeah. smart to do that not a lot of people did. So, yeah. You know, so it was, would you say like a lot of people, or was it like a mix of Instagram and the email list? Was it mainly the email list or how was that balance basically? 
for the course or in the beginning yeah, for the course for the course it was mostly my email list i think like i didn't do a lot of things on instagram i, I put the word out but i wasn't super aggressive because i was really i was being very conservative because i just wanted to see how this was received and how this went so i actually didn't get to do a lot of um the marketing end of it once the the, the course opened I didn't even get to do a lot of that stuff because I closed it down so soon after it opened up. Um, but the buildup, that was most, I think mostly the response came from email and there's a little bit of Instagram, but I didn't really hit Instagram quite as hard. Gotcha. Yeah. Awesome. So it was like primarily the email list. If you had used Instagram, so. maybe the internet would have broken for, uh, for one minute. <laughs> yeah. I would have shut the internet down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you, you did a great job and it's really interesting kind of how, you know, things transformed, how your mindset changed. And yeah. it's always nice to see how people sometimes, you know, it's something new for a lot of people. For, your, for you, it was something new as well, how you grew into it and yeah, did, did something really awesome or serving a lot of people, helping people do what you were doing, which is awesome. You kind of, the movement that you started, the painting a day. Yeah. You have now a lot of, not disciples, but people who basically follow you who are doing the same things that you're teaching. Right. So it's, it's awesome. Like, yeah. Congratulations. Really, it's exciting. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. So before we kind of wrap up, um, just tell people one more time where they can check out your art and what you're doing if they're curious. Uh, yeah. Go to DwayneKaiser.com and or if, actually there's one more website, a paintingaday.com. You can go there and you see my, my small pieces that I've been talking about. And you can also get on my email list and I'll send you a painting each day or a painting a week or a painting a month, whatever you prefer. Um, and then you can follow my work that way or just go to Instagram. Awesome. Yeah. They might even enroll for your course when it opens up again, who knows? Yeah, yeah please do. <laughs> yeah. Awesome stuff. Thanks so much, Dwayne, for this little session here. Really appreciate you sharing the insights. And once again, well, well done. Thanks, Del. So that was it. I hope you enjoyed the interview with Dwayne and learned a couple of new things. And if you're an artist or if you're in a creative niche yourself, then hopefully you could pick up some good gold nuggets. And um, yeah, thanks so much for watching the video. And I'll see you soon.